French President Macron has been making a lot of international news lately, whether it be his military and diplomatic involvement in the Eastern Mediterranean, his frequent visits to Beirut, or his constant safeguarding of the secular French state and its values. During his three-year tenure, the youngest president in French history has perfected the art of Gaelic blunders, highlighted by a series of gaffes, outlandish statements, and PR stunts that have backfired frequently, finding himself at odds with his own people, the French press, and fumbling with France's colonial legacy. Mr. Macron, a Parisian educated in NAC, an ex-Rothschild banker, is hardly a man of the people. Often accused of being out of touch with voters, he once told an unemployed gardener, asking him for employment advice, this. <laughs> the perplexed gardener responded by stating that he is up every day at 6 a.m. trying to find work. The French Premier's elitism, dismissiveness and inconsideration to the French public, particularly the poor, is reflected repetitively in his policies and words. In 2017, Macron's response to disgruntled French workers was this. Il y en a certains, au lieu de le bordel, il ferait mieux d'aller regarder. Euh... Ah, oui, oui, mais... avoir des <laughs> Accused of class contempt, he went on to say during an opening ceremony of a train station that, quote, a train station, it's a place where one encounters people who are succeeding and people who are nothing. In 2017, Macron received pop stars Rihanna and Bono on humanitarian missions to discuss students and poverty. A bit of an awkward PR stunt considering Macron had already floated a tax bill that would enormously benefit the rich and slashed housing subsidies for students and the poor. According to the French Economic Observatory at the French University Science Po, the 42-year-old's tax reforms would ultimately worsen inequality in the country. And just take a look at the way in which he addresses the issue of social benefits. La politique sociale, regardez. On met un pognon de dingue dans des, dans des minima sociaux. Les gens, ils sont quand même pauvres. On n'en sort pas. Adding insult to injury, Macron's proposed slashing of public spending came after he proposed to make his wife, 20 years his senior and former high school teacher, the first lady of France, and create a paid position for her as an official advisor. France doesn't have a first lady, and the public was not in the mood for a new high-paid government position, and so more than 300,000 people signed a change.org petition asking that she not be given an official post. Ironically, Macron's own party, En Marche, was at the time in the middle of a parliamentary process that would make it illegal to hire close relatives. Macron recently defended the decision by Charlie Hebdo magazine to republish offensive caricatures of the Prophet Muhammad. Claiming to stand by freedom of expression and belief, the president stated that, quote, it's never the place of a president of the republic to pass judgment on the editorial choice of a journalist or newsroom, never because we have freedom of the press. Yet here is the same Macron saying this to a journalist after the journalist revealed his secret meeting with Hezbollah in Lebanon. What you have done here, compte tenu of the sensibility of the subject, compte tenu of what you know about the history of this country, is irresponsible. Irresponsible for France, irresponsible for the interests here, and it's grave from the deontology point of view. You have heard me defend the journalists, it's always true, but I'm talking about Franchise. What you have done is grave, non-professional and mesquin. Wow, sensitive history, unprofessionalism, mean, dangerous. So for Macron, Charlie Hebdo is none of these things. But exposing a meeting about the future of Lebanon sets him off. This is not by any means the first time Macron finds himself at crosshairs with the press. During the Benalla affair, when one of Macron's personal guard had donned the police helmet and punched the protester, Macron chose to remain silent for five days after the news broke, only to come out during a speech and say that, quote, I see a media power that wants to become a judicial power that decided there was no longer the presumption of innocence in the Republic and that it must trample on a man and with him all the Republic. His issue with criticism is not only directed to the press, but also his own cabinet. There have been numerous high-profile resignations, including the former head of the French Armed Forces, General Pierre de Villiers. Macron had promised the general to increase defense spending. Then once in office, he slashed the army's budget by $980 million. De Villiers reportedly complained during a closed-door parliamentary meeting about the cuts. Then Macron started a very public scuffle, shutting down any criticism in his military choices. If something puts the chief of the armed forces at odds with the president of the republic, the chief of the armed forces changes, he said. De Villiers resigned, but many retired officers lambasted Macron over what they saw as his disrespectful and authoritarian leadership in dealing with dissent. This touch of arrogance and Napoleonic complex that Macron seems to embody is perhaps best exemplified when he lashed out at a teenager, 
cheerfully greeting his president as Manu. Ça va Manu? The superiority complex depicted in the video has also been visible in Macron's foreign policy and dealings with foreign entities, whether it be in Africa, the Middle East, or facing France's colonial legacy at home. When Macron beat Le Pen more than three years ago, he was welcomed as a symbol of openness and tolerance, a vanguard of Western liberal values that would safeguard the nation against the rising far-right anti-immigrant and racist rhetoric on the rise in France and across the EU. But Macron's appreciation on matters of race and power have been found wanting. Le défi de l'Afrique, il est totalement différent, il est beaucoup plus profond, il est civilisationnel. That was Macron giving Africans a lecture during a G20 meeting about having too many babies. Initially championed for admitting that France and colonial powers committed crimes against humanity in the past. He said this to an Algerian confronting him about these very crimes. Mais vous, vous avez quel âge Another sharp U-turn when it comes to actually taking responsibility occurred when BLM protesters in France demanded statues of colonials be taken down. La République n'effacera aucune trace ni aucun nom de son histoire. Elle n'oubliera aucune de ses œuvres. Elle ne déboulonnera pas de statues. Macron even had the nerve to address an Arab lady aspiring to permanently emigrate to France that and Macron hasn't exactly not encouraged the anti-immigration sentiment, promising to ban Arabic and Turkish language courses at schools, while criticizing parts of French society to be promoting, quote, Islamic separatism. Macron's antics have also been observed away from home, when he nearly snatched the microphone from the Ghanaian president who was reminding the world of the ills of Europe's colonial legacy, when he said he wasn't Santa in French Guyana, or when he abruptly took over the Lebanese president's press conference and ushered him away in his own country. All in all, Mr. Macron does still have supporters and allies, but he's also gained many more critics and enemies, both within France and around the world. Ultimately, it will be the French public that will decide his fate in the 2022 elections, revealing what they think of him and the future of their country.